Russia was too big of a country to rule. In 1913, it expanded 4,000 miles from Europe to Alaska and contained 125 million people. Russia had few roads and limited industrialization. Most people were still peasants. The government of Russia, which Nicholas ruled over alone, was far too much work for one man. Russia was industrializing and the workers were poor and oppressed. The representatives of the new middle class industrialists, for instance, the social revolutionaries and the social democrats who split into Mensheviks who wanted peaceful change unlike the Bolshevik. In 1904, Nicholas lost the war with Japan which undermined his authority. At the end of the Civil War, Lenin and the Bolsheviks were the winners and became the political leaders of Russia. Lenin created an economic policy called the New Economic Plan that allowed for limited capitalism. Other Bolshevik did not like th this plan because of the capitalism it allowed. The plan was pretty successful. Lenin eventually led the revolution and ruled through the Civil War. Civil War ended in 1921 and Lenin died in 1924. At the time of Lenin's death, no one knew who could replace him since Lenin did not clearly point out who would be the next ruler. The two main candidates most likely to replace Lenin were Trotsky and Stalin. However, the document that Lenin left with relating to the House of Leaders, Lenin's testament presented Stalin in a negative way. This is due to the fact that Stalin had offended Lenin's wife at the time the document was written. It suggested the removal of Stalin from his current position. Unwilling to lose the power he had already gained, Stalin formed an alliance with Kamenov and Dinovev and left this in the Politburo. With their help, Stalin was able to play off the document and get Trotsky removed from power and exiled to Mexico. However, soon after his power increased, he broke off his alliance with Kamenov and Zinovich to ally with the rightists of the Politburo and dismissed Kamenov and Zinovich in 1927. Soon afterwards, Stalin brought his supporters into the Politburo and broke alliance with the rightists to get them dismissed. The only ones left were his supporters, thus he was able to rise to power without any opposition. Still, Stalin was highly paranoid. He felt that there was always someone to get him. This paranoia resulted in what became known as the Great Purges. Stalin used a system of encouragement to get the Russian people to point out who were the threats in Stalin's reign. This resulted in a great number of accusations and arrests of people in the Politburo, in the military personnel, and in the regular people of Russia. At the end, the only ones left in Russia were the people who loved him and were willing to do anything for their leader. Much of Stalin's power depended on his public image to the people, as it has already been proven with his alliance with Kamenov and Zinoviev. In 1927, Stalin announced the program Collectivationism, which is collective farming. But seeing that the peasants were not going to volunteer for the program, he forced the policy on them. The peasants reacted by burning anything in the possession, grain, cattle, sheep, etc. This led to famine. Unwilling to have a negative image of him rising, he stopped the program in 1930, blaming the failure on his officials but he continued the program a year later. Soon afterwards, a famine broke out again. More than 5 million died. Again, Stalin blamed someone else, this time the Kulak, the peasant class, and declared war on them. By 1934, he had eliminated all 7 million Kulaks in the Soviet Union. As a result, he was able to keep his positive image to the people and was able to keep his program going. Stalin's aim for economic policies were to increase military strength of the country to resist foreign intervention, also to achieve self-sufficiency in order to make the USSR independent of Western manufactured goods. Another one of his aims was to increase grain supply. He wanted to end dependence of the economy on a backward agricultural system. In the past, this had created huge problems when there was bad harvest or peasants 
did not produce enough food. The farms were being collectivized as peasants consisted of 80% of population. Solid wanted a land and food production under full control of the state. In 1929, collective farms were established to replace individual farms owned by the peasants. Those who disagreed or refused to go along with the policy were branded kulaks and were severely punished. Stalin's aims for social policies were to improve standards of living. He wanted to catch up with the West in terms of standard living people enjoy. Industrialization would create a wealthy society and communism should appeal to workers across the world. He wanted to restore more conservative values of women and family. Stalin's aim for political policies was to crush internal class enemies of the Kulaks and bring the countryside and thus grain supply under communist control. Stalin knew that the only way industrialization would be achieved was by taking full control of the resources and labor of the Soviet Union. Stalin introduced a series of fire plans to achieve a revolution from above. Stalin introduced a series of five-year plans to achieve a revolution from above. The first five-year plan was between 1929 and 1932. It called for a massive increase in industrial output and to create a proletariat by moving large numbers of peasants from the countryside to the cities. The second and third five-year plans shifted the production to heavy industrial goods as iron and steel plants were producing, but the country needed trains, trucks, and tractors. Hitler was focusing on rearmament in Germany and many countries now opposed communism and Soviet Union. Stalin wanted to make sure they had the resources to rearm. Industrialization would be achieved through labor discipline, slave labor, and propaganda. For labor discipline, very harsh laws were introduced that punished workers who were late or absent and also made it a crime to break machinery. In some extreme cases, these crimes were punished with execution. For propaganda, Stalin's speeches about the successes of the fire plans were printed in papers and with their own eyes, workers saw that the Soviet Union was industrializing and catching up with the capitalist powers. Stalin's policies could be seen as being a success in favor from different perspectives. Collectivization from a peasant's perspective. Around 17 million peasants moved from the countryside in order to look for jobs. Somewhere between 5 to 10 million collects were sent to labor camps. This was a terrible policy for the Russian population. This was a terrible policy for the Russian population. Now, from Stalin's perspective, collectivization was a failure in the sense that it led to the decline of both harvest and yield. By 1934, 50% of all livestock had been slaughtered by the peasants themselves as they rather slaughter than surrender it to the state. However, it allowed Stalin to pursue class warfare and crush what he saw as internal enemies, Kulaks. Stalin finally secured the grain supply needed for industrialization and managed to export for finance. Focusing on heavy industry and arms meant that workers lacked basic consumer goods such as clothes and shoes. This left the Soviet economy unbalanced. The drive for rapid industry led to awful social conditions for the workers' safety with neglected and low wages and tough discipline. Wages fell by 15% in the five years after 1928. Workers did benefit from increasing in education and training due to the need of skilled workforce, but this created a new industrial elite in Soviet with higher wages and extra benefit directly contrasted communist desire for equality. Now for industrialization from Stalin's perspective. In 1928 through 1941, there was 400 increase in steel and 600 in coal. The best proof of economic success was the Soviet Union's ability to defend itself against Nazi Germany in the total war of four years. To a certain extent, the statement, in order to achieve and retain power, a leader of a single party state needed to be ruthless, blind to human suffering, and yet charismatic, proves true. Stalin fits the description. Through ruthless tactics in ridding himself of his opponents, he was able to overcome his obstacles and become dictator of Russia for a quarter of a century. Through his policies, he had eliminated millions of people, gaining support from his followers instead of hatred. At the same time, he was charismatic, trying to make himself look good for his people, 
such as acting friendly towards children, thus creating a cult of personality. It wasn't until after his death in 1953 that people understood his wrongdoings and aimed to fix the harm the tyrant had done.